This is Twit. The New York Times reports that Google has acquired Boston Dynamics. They're the company most famous for that big dog robot that walks on all four legs like a dog, hence the name Big Dog. Former Android OS head Andy Rubin, who is working on robotics projects for Google, posted a link to the report on Twitter with the comment, the future is looking awesome. Boston Dynamics founder Mark Rabert told the New York Times he's excited by Andy and Google's ability to think big. Big thoughts. A 60 Minutes report on the NSA, which aired last night, aired to a course of boos, at least online. The segment claimed it was taking a hard-hitting look at the NSA, but has been written off by many as simply a puff piece. For example, journalist Glenn Greenwald wondered why 60 Minutes reporter John Miller didn't ask about how General Keith Alexander, quote, routinely lied to Congress and FISA courts. Miller said in a CBS piece that he, quote, asked the hardest questions we could ask. Last week, YouTube users with videos showing off video game footage were hit with copyright claims. If YouTube finds infringing content on a monetized video, YouTube will divert that revenue to the party asserting its copyright. Now, the footage of the gameplay is copyrighted by the video game maker. This is causing a controversy because the copyright sweep seemed not to target larger managed channels, but smaller affiliate channels, even though they both show very similar video content. Payment plans have become the new trend among U.S. mobile phone carriers, and now Amazon's getting in on the act, taking up the practice for its Kindle Fire HDX. Between now and December 24th, you can choose to pay off your tablet in four installments spread over nine months. The plans apply to the $229 7-inch Kindle Fire HDX and the $379 Kindle Fire HDX 8.9. Whether this means Amazon is having a harder time moving the tablets or just wants to spike the sales is hard to say. Maybe we should just tap the Mayday button and ask. The startup Oculus VR has raised another $75 million to market its virtual reality headset for video games. The company says the money will go to producing commercial versions of its virtual reality glasses for video games called Oculus Rift, which users mount on their heads with a strap. The company says it also wants to take its technology beyond gaming. Here are some rumors about the upcoming Galaxy S5 from Samsung. Sam Mobile reported that Samsung might release two versions of the S5, one with a plastic body, another with a metal one. A new report by ZDNet Korea says Samsung will introduce a new smartphone in February at Mobile World Congress with a quad HD display and iris scanner. The report doesn't specifically say the phone is the S5 or not. Ford announced Friday it will host an unexpected analyst meeting this coming Wednesday where Chief Financial Officer Bob Shanks will talk to analysts and reporters. Shanks may update the financial outlook for 2014. Ford is preparing for its biggest new line launch yet, including redesigned F-150s and Mustangs. Also possible is a definitive statement one way or another about the future of Ford CEO Alan Mulally, who is widely rumored to be a top candidate to replace Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer. Twitter's testing a new feature, at least for some users, that shows tweets tied to a certain location on a map. The nearby feature shows up as one of the new timelines accessed by swiping across from the default view. It's been possible to attach a location to a tweet since way back in 2010, but the new feature could help with local discovery of events or disasters in near real time. But ultimately, the goal would be to make other users' tweets more relevant to you. German workers who have been engaged in strikes against Amazon since May are taking their protests to Seattle, the Amazon company headquarters this week. Members of U.S. unions, including the Communication Workers of America, will join the demonstration in support of the German Verdi Union. Workers at the German Logistics Center in Bad Hersfeld, Leipzig, and Graben have been called to go on strike today as well. The unions want a better working environment and better pay. Marissa Meyer took to the Yahoo Tum blog to apologize for Yahoo Mail being down for about 1% of its users. She said the problem affecting Yahoo Mail was due to a storage system problem, and the solution for users was nuanced since different users were impacted in different ways. Meyer says that as of Friday afternoon, Yahoo restored service for almost everyone and says in the future, the company will do better.